So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-whips pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops that is 111 consecutive weeks thrice over that we have been doing this stupid fucking podcast and it just keeps getting worse every single episode this 333rd episode is 333 times more awful than the original first episode of this show i'm your host court the main reason this keeps happening to us is my co-host matt you might say it's humongously long running huh huh I see what you uh, did there. Yeah, it's humongously worse than it used to be. So humongous way, is humongous. Uh, yeah, only a Canadian sh- flick, and it's humongous in runtime. No, no, I mean it's it's pretty all right in runtime. In ninety-seven ish minutes. Yeah. And depending upon which version I snagged off the Blu-ray for your review copy, <gasps> the horror of the shock court rips his own Blu-rays, which he owns for a copy that Matt have to review and then destroy. <gasps> the dun, horror. Dun, 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 dun. 
It's like the 333rd time that I've made a joke about doing just yeah. that. This yes, is why the show course. keeps getting worse, because we are like the kings of the callback, and we just constantly yes. call back to everything, even if it's not funny. I'm going to call it back to fucking, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to call it back to a joke I haven't even made yet. There's a callback. <laughs> Future callbacks. Holy shit. We're lost yeah. at sea. I know, right? Yeah. So, uh, Humongous this week is something that we are definitely going to discuss. This is a 1982 slasher film. Is it a slasher film or is it a survival horror film? Where would, it's been heralded as a slasher film, but I would say it's more I, of a survival horror film. I mean, it could be either or. I can see it also being a slasher film because of the story behind it. It's a very common... Uh, esque type slasher story. Okay, well, you got me there. Uh, without really going too much into the detail of the actual story, you are correct. The elements of everything that you would need to call it a slasher film exist, therefore slasher film. But it feels much more of a survivalist, like shipwrecked uh, horror film as well. So I will say this for the film, those two elements, I think it does blend together rather well. And yes, I will give it that. Um, but man, is there not one likable fucking male character in this movie? <laughs> I would submit to you that there's not one likable likable male yeah yeah that's yeah i mean you're probably not wrong <laughs> i mean i'm trying my best but i even i know that like i, I look i've been around me 24 7 for 42 years i know what i'm like folks yeah I'm, i've been around me for a lot of time man I, I know exactly what i'm all about and that's just being a horrible fucking person <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm not about being a horrible person i'm just trying my best not to be and failing miserably at it yeah well that too <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, this is us trying to talk around the fact that we can't really talk about the movie because we don't want to spoil the plot line of the film because we're going to actually yeah. be getting into the film. Even though Matt's already spoiled the review, which you will hear once you hear the review of the film, you will hear how he spoiled his review for the film in the outtakes after all of that is over with. I don't know why I'm trying so hard to give you so much when, to look forward to in this episode but, as if I feel like it's not going to be any good. But when will then be now? <laughs> Then is what just happened. So okay. then can never be now. But when will now be then is right here with this Legion Patreon ad. Okay. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet. My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting. But that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon. And for $5, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it. And thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. Right, so that's Weezer Island in the Sun for those of you that are listening on the Pirate Radio Edit. Ooh, and that one takes me back. Yeah, this mm. week I'm gonna try and uh, do my best to fit it in with the story, with the themes of the songs. Uh, they do spend some time in an island on in the sun. Uh, yeah, you know that does happen. Uh, and I don't think they do much playing or having fun, but. It depends upon your perspective on what you find fun and play. Yeah. Well, I don't think they personally have much fun or play. I, yeah, I would believe that they, in fact, do not have very much fun on the island in the sun, no matter what no. the trailer tries to sell you. Yeah. <laughs> Humongous. Six people stranded, cornered, hunted. Because here, on Dog Island, something evil has been growing for 30 years. Humongous. It's loose. It's 
angry, and it's getting hungry. Humongous. God help us. Okay, quick question for you. How many machine guns were fired during the actual movie, Humongous? None. All right. They did these gunshot things where every time the gun was shot, a letter for Humongous, like H-U-M-O-N-G-O-U-S, would pop up. And I don't remember what the machine gun fire was in the trailer, but I have no idea why there's machine gun fire in the trailer unless they're shooting out more credits because that's what this trailer decided to do. And I think that really kind of establishes what you're in store for, folks. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. It's, um... It's some horse shit sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Ease up on the movie. You can't be cruel. You're right. You're right. You're right. I mean, I'm just saying it was horse shit because of the, the guns thing. Yeah, the guns thing is horse shit. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that, that's all I was saying was horse oh. shit okay. for right now. Okay. For um, right now. For right li- <laughs> Listen to you, you fucking backhanding little commenter in there. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Humongous. Uh, so... Let's see here. So we start, uh, first 20 minutes, we're at a Labor Day party. It's Labor Day weekend, 1945. We uh, know this because the uh, movie fucking tells us. Thank so, you, movie, for telling thanks. us what year we're in, even though the yeah. sepia tone alluded to me that it was old-timey. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, we need to know things sometimes, and it helps us. Um, I think the movie's just trying to be nice to us. Uh, so anyway, we see it's a big party <laughs> happening on the <laughs> island, <laughs> and there's there's a young lady enjoying her dogs. Uh, she's looking at him, just, you know, t- 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 having a moment with, with her pets. Um, nothing wrong with that. No, it's actually a really nice intimate scene and it sets up the yeah. innocence of her character. Yes. And, uh, well then a, a, a drunken dude, uh, comes walking down and he gets rather, uh, forceful with her and she's like, Hey, get the fuck off of me. And he's kind of being a From real the sound dick. of it, they were dating and he's tired of her not giving him sex. See, I don't think they're even <coughs> dating. I think that she's just around and he thinks that he gets to have her. I'm going by some of the dialogue of some of the stuff that they said, but it made it sound like they had dated or at least had been out on a date. But yes, nothing is any reason for him to be behaving in this manner at all. It is grotesque from the moment he steps onto the screen and the way that he treats her is absolutely horrible and disgusting and he deserves everything that happens to him. But I'm just saying like to establish this. Let's get there though. (laughs) Right. Uh, But what I'm saying is to establish this is I think that there was some story there that I just want to point out that they may have had somewhat of a history how much they dated i don't know but there was something in the conversation about that okay uh well anyway uh he ca- she runs away but he catches up with her and he's pretty much <coughs> like hey you know you're you're you old maid he calls her an old maid which makes me think that they didn't date because uh usually that's a term for a woman who has not you know has, shows no interest in being a wife well that doesn't mean that she doesn't date it just means she has no interest in being a wife apparently it's possible um either way he gets really rough with her um she's trying to get away uh he doesn't care and it's a pretty brutal rape scene that happens here okay Very so, fucking brutal so that means you've definitely seen the uh unrated version i got the right copy to you not the yeah yeah you must version. have thanks for that because yeah you you definitely get the uh fucking the shit in this so it could have been significantly more exploitative, but what it is is very realistic and grimly so, uh, to yes. where it shows just how repulsive and disgusting of an act rape is. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, they do involve nudity and focus in on the nudity of the woman um, mm-hmm. in part it's of that. exploitative as fuck. Right. And that is the part where um, it, it seems to be more for the possible titillation of the audience and you don't do that in a rape scene, so fuck off for that movie. Yeah, fuck you, movie. You're you're a piece of shit. So uh, after, uh, but then we see during the rape, her dogs that she was visiting the pen are going fucking nuts. <coughs> they are going crazy. And they leap out of their pen. It's a Rottweiler and a German Shepherd, uh, known to be so fucking friendly when they are in protect mode. Uh, and as he, after he's done raping her, and he's sort of trying to address the dog's attack and tear him to fucking shreds, she stops the dogs from killing him and then kills her, kills him herself by like hitting him in the head with a fucking rock. Now, the, after th- oh, go ahead. Now the reason that you definitely want the unrated version, even though the rape scene is so much more horrific you would have lost yeah. all of this wonderful gru and gore that's in the film yeah that's that's good because the, when the dogs are tearing them apart you get a warm feeling and the uh 
in 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 your stomach. You feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watching a rapist get chewed upon by like three pissed off dogs really kind of I, does put you in the holiday spirit. It's a good fucking time, man. I'm telling you, it's like, wow, look at this guy who's suffering the consequences of his own actions. It's real nice. And when she actually stops the dogs, I was like, no, do not be merciful to this piece of, yeah. oh, and then she starts smashing his head in with the rock. I'm like, you go, girl. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that also, you're like, all right, good job. Good for you. Good for you. That's what he deserves. <laughs> it's a preventative measure. It's a way to make sure that he will never do this to another person again. <laughs> Exactly. He will probably, ne- you've made him a better person by killing him. So uh, <laughs> He's no longer using up valuable resources for human beings that give back to society. Exactly. Exa- she made him a better person. So um, now we go into an intro, which is pics of her and all her dogs. And it, it doesn't seem like a very happy lot of years have passed. And we come and now we get told it's 36 years later. We know this because the movie just told us. So again, I thank you, movie, for letting me know where I am in life. <laughs> Yeah, it pretty much telegraphs everything you need to know about the plot line by skipping ahead from a horrendous rape by exactly enough time to give someone to be an adult from that. Yes. <laughs> that just took place. Uh, well, anyway, um, the, the we see a group of teens. They're all getting their shit together, trying to sail off on a boat. Uh, they're trying to clean up the campgrounds anyway. Uh, one guy, one kid, he's out there with his sister. They're cleaning up. And she's like, hey, uh, if you look up there, that girl, she wants you really to look at her boobs. And we do see a lady watching that dude from the window and she is in fact naked uh thank you movie thank you movie um then we see the dude in the room was with her and he is that other guy's outside's brother and he said hey his brother wouldn't be interested in her he uh apparently only likes like the the virgin type girls the good girls and he uh, said specifically classy girls and classy said that girls. she was there not you. classy. Yeah, classy. And he said and that he didn't mind. I lo- he doesn't mind a girl with a bit of mileage on her. Yeah. Isn't that what he said? Something. Yeah. yeah like he, just every yeah. fucking male in this film is a piece of shit. Yeah. 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 Even and I'll get into it. Even the, the, the one who's supposed to be the good bro. He's 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 a whiny piece <laughs> of shit. But we'll get to that later. This is mostly um, a heel program. Yeah, this is definitely mostly a heel program. Uh, so anyway, then that brother, the 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 dipshit one, he starts getting rapey with her, and she's able to get out of the room, and he gets all pissed off at whatever because he's pretty much he is the modern day Republican Party. This kid's wrapped up into it, mullet and all. Yeah. Uh, so then angry bro, he grabs a gun and storms, grabs his rifle, storms out of the house. Well, his uh, pistol was denied, so he has to. Yeah. compensate with a firearm and it is his right as a citizen is it not well not to do what he's about to do he loads a bullet and then points the gun at his brother and it makes like that he's gonna go ahead and kill his bro he's going to kill his brother so haha this should be real fucking funny uh i would say and- that the nra would argue his right to be able to point a loaded weapon at his brother at his own whim well, i mean a former vice president did it and blew a guy's face off and nothing happened to him so what the fuck do you want um Anyway, he moves the gun. He shoots it still. And his brother's like, are you a fucking idiot? And he's like, I wasn't pointing it at you. I didn't hit you, did I? And he's a real piece of shit. And yeah, you want this guy to die from, like, the oh, get-go. I, I want to be able to watch him die. And she's like, I already don't like him. <clears throat> and, like, I don't even think I'm doing him justice for how much of an asshole he is. No, you really uh, aren't because it hurts. T- yeah, it hurts too much to actually discuss and just voice, how much of a fucking piece of shit this asshole is. And, and he's got this whiny fuck voice, this fuck boy voice that you just are like fuck off asshole yeah he belongs in a yellow and black fred murray polo the kind of bitch ass bullshit that he's trying to fucking pull acting like yeah i mean it is it's hard to like try to say oh let me let me let me do a proper i can't i can't do it justice when you watch the movie you'll see you just want this piece of shit dead and you want him dead for like a long fucking time (laughs) like from pretty much the first word he says you instantly know that he's a piece of shit you can just tell yeah Oh, yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, anyway, they're able to get all this shit together, and they take off. Um, we see the douche guy, his his lady. Uh, she's kind of dancing on the boat. She's definitely dancing for the nice bro, because she definitely has a thing for him. And the nice bro, he kind of sees it, and he smiles a little bit, and he's like, all right. Um, then that girl goes to talk to nice bro's girlfriend, and they're talking about she wants to be a model, just like the nice bro's girlfriend is a model. And they talk a little bit, and so then the nice bro's girlfriend, she goes up to... To the 
the the main like the bridge, whatever you want to call it, wherever he's driving. Where the wheel is, and, yeah, where he's where driving. Where the wheel from. is. And he goes, hey, why don't you steer a little bit? And she does, and they have a little hanky panky because he grabs her ass. So I mean, you know, all this seems above board, so it's all right. She's giggling and she's having a good time and she's oh. playing coy, but she definitely wants him to be yeah. kind of. And by you, the way, this this is the end of the first twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can kind of tell that like she's into it and they have this little playful thing that they do and this is just sort of yeah. like what they do as a couple. Yeah, they're she, they're having fun. She's smiling. She's enjoying herself. But everyone, it, you know. Yeah. And now we kind of know who everyone is. You have the good bro, the who's supposed to be the good bro, the piece of shit brother. Um, you have the smart alecky. Uh. Uh sister because their sister's kind of a smart aleck smart ass uh little sister uh you have the one girlfriend who's definitely being abused by dipshit bro and then the nice girlfriend you know who's well adjusted and in in love with her boyfriend and there is a go. model apparently and, and is, is a like model this super sweet innocent girl yeah 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 so there you go <laughs> so everyone everyone knows who everyone fucking is <laughs> yeah uh the the dynamics that they have set up are pretty much cut and dry slasher stuff definitely uh there is uh, like the nerdy female friend who knows all of this stuff that we've kind of overshadowed by the other characters. She's yeah. kind of the only person that's not a heel in the program. And she just disappears in the background because everybody else is so awful you forget about her. But like, yeah, the little she, sister, she's a smart ass. Yeah, she's a smart ass, but she's a genuine person who is trying to, you know, kind of keep everybody together. She's basically being a smart ass, joking around, just trying to diffuse all the tension between the two bros. Yeah, because, she's trying to have fun because they're competing between which one of them is the ultimate bro. And yeah, basically, little bro with the gun is basically the guy that well, is trying to let's overcompensate. Say, I don't even think the two bros are trying to compete. I think little bro with the gun is mad because you know good bro probably does do everything right probably got all good grades is respectful you know uh, it, during the early part of the, the movie when they're cleaning up the grounds he the good bro tells him hey this would go quicker if more work and the guy's like yeah the uh, the old guy owns the property and his uh, uses a derogatory term for someone with special needs. Um, son <clears throat> is coming down. They'll do it. And he's like, that's just bullshit. So far, I do not hate the the what is supposed to be the good bro. I'll hate him later. But I, it doesn't seem like he's doing anything wrong. It's This is a little bro who has a huge chip on his shoulder. And instead of con- to talking to his family, wanting to be a part of his family, he decided to say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grow a mullet and he's going to grab a gun and that's going to make him the big bad man. <laughs> Yeah, he is the face of the modern day GOP. You are right. Yeah, that is that is definitely the. That, I mean, I just explained to you what the modern day GOP is. So, um, <laughs> yeah, this would be the meme with uh, Pam from the Office, where she's like, the, yeah. it, "It's the same. It's the same photo. It's the same picture. It's the same picture." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's who we got. It's, I mean, in but that's kind of standard horror fo- movie fare when you're talking this kind of horror movie. I suppose. I so. think I think Big Bro is a little over confident and i think he does kind of rub it in that he's like perfect to the little bro a little bit it's not bad it's just maybe but you don't see it you don't see it yet yeah. you don't see it at all maybe it may... now that's something you're inferring i'm just telling you what i've seen so far what i've seen is a bro trying to make sure everything stays clean yeah. stays the way they found it and tries to respect property yeah but... just tries to show a general respectful attitude yeah but he's kind of and... a, he's kind of a douche the way that he comes down on them about it a little bit where he's like you know it's right thing well, to do and he well, guilt trips also, him a little bit but he's annoyed that he's the only one doing any work well right which is absolutely fine but like you know i don't yeah, know i just, mean i'd be pretty annoyed too i'd be like motherfuckers what are we doing here right. there's there's five, five of us i and- just fucking hate the guy okay all right i get it i get you hate him trust me i'll hate him it'll, i'll hate him by the end of this movie i'll be right with you and i'll tell you why well let's get to that part when can then be now <laughs> soon <laughs> uh so uh we start the next 20 minutes uh they're they're now they're going through the night uh, on the water it's very foggy so things have to be very very cautious uh uh asshole bro is definitely being a little bit of a bitch and he's just bitching and moaning about everything like why did you even fucking come uh he's franklin they, without the wheelchair yeah yeah all of a sudden they, they they find a stranded dude in another boat a fisherman and that's our first clip I don't know what I'd done if you people hadn't come along. You'd have probably drowned. Damn motor went out. Couldn't start it for the life of me. Here, these should fit you. Wait a minute, those mine. Of course. You don't bother to ask me. What was that? Hey, 
Baker. Sounded like. I'm behind the island, like you said. Fog's lifted a bit. I think we're okay. That's a pretty tight channel up ahead. We'll stay put for a while. I'm Eric Simmons. Bert Defoe. Thanks. You from around here, Bert? St. Martin. That's where we were headed before all this. You meet everybody? It's my sister Carla, my brother Nick, Fanny Ralston, and Donna Blake. You can change downstairs if you like. This island, uh, is there anything on it? Dogs. There. Hear it? That's the Don's. Island's supposed to be crawling with him. Not that anyone's actually been on it. The old lady doesn't want company. There's an old lady living there? Yeah. There's a lodge house. Big place up in the trees there. Can't quite see it now. And the dogs are for what? Protection? That's what the signs say. But why? Who is she? Don't know. She's been there for years. Long before me. Whoever she is, she ain't a caretaker or anything like that. Everything's really run down. You see her about... Twice a year, spring and fall, when she comes into St. Martin for supplies. She doesn't talk, won't even look at you. It's like she's in another world. I don't think anyone even knows her name, at least I never heard it. Why did you mention a caretaker before? Who actually owns the island? Parsons family used to, you know? Parsons Lumber? I've heard of it. They got timberland all around here. It was them that really opened up this lake. Old Ed Parsons built the lodge in there. He used to spend his summers there. There was a lot going on here right up into the 60s. A lot going on where? Well, excuse me for breathing. They say that lodge has got everything. Storage, lockers, freezers. It's got its own generator for power. Oh, so that old lady then, she could stay put there for quite a while, like I said. But what's her connection to the Parsons family? I mean, why her? All I know is that she's there and nobody's saying she shouldn't be. Not with those dogs around. God. So weird. <laughs> a story like that needs sound effects. Oh, I want that motherfucker to die in a fire. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just the fucking worst. Well, anyway, that night, the nice bro and his girlfriend are laying in bed and they're talking and we can just hear fucking douchey bro trying to get some from, I'm not even going to call it his girlfriend anymore because she wants nothing to do with him. She keeps saying no and he's getting pissed about it. So then uh, we see asshole bro comes out and he's on the outside of the boat, drunk, has his gun and he decides, you know, fuck it, he's done staying there because it's his right as he keeps saying to this boat and as much as anybody and fuck it he's done staying there so no matter what he can't see where they're going doesn't know all this fog he's gonna start the boat uh the the fisherman tries to stop him telling him he's dumb but he has the gun keeping everyone away finally the good brother gets up there they struggle for control uh the boat the wheel starts starts going the boat is now in motion and uh it's fucking uh as they're struggling the boat hits something hits some rocks a fire starts uh as it keeps striking stuff everyone's getting thrown from the boat uh, a fire starting and then it blows up so much like you know again it's almost like a lot of it's like the playbook for the republican party uh, a pandemic that could be easily squashed but my rights so now it just runs rampant and kills people <laughs> it's weird that you're inferring uh that kind of meaning because how would they have known that the future of the republican party would end up like it did in 1982 because the republican party was like that in 1982 <laughs> So it's an indictment of humans that refuse to take care of each other because they're selfish pieces of shit? Yeah, welcome to America. Yeah, I was just going to say, this is America, man. I mean, Donald Glover <laughs> wrote a whole fucking song about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is That's that's what America is all about. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, these kids and their stupid fucking action is American as apple pie. The guy yeah. crashing the boat is the most American fucking decision anyone that, could ever make in their life. That is your standard Republican American right there. No, it's just fucking just standard American in general. Like, you can't get the control that you want to go where you want to go, so yeah. you're going to destroy the boat and wreck it, and wreck it so you kill everyone involved, including yourself. That is so fucking American. Yeah. Well, they all wash up on shore, but the little sister is missing. Uh, the fisherman also has, like, a broken ankle or a broken leg, so he's not doing all that great either. The little sister has disappeared after the crash, too. Nobody can find her. Uh, yeah. 
So the asshole, bro, he kind of seems like he's like, fuck, I, I really did do this. You can almost see it in his face. And he even offers, he goes, let me go check out the island, see if I can find. They want to, main thing when they want to fight is like the lodge, just to see if they can get some cover for the night and to get, uh, uh, just to get some help. And maybe they can call someone, get some food, something. Yeah, the asshole brother has what Matt has learned about in recovery as a moment of clarity. Yes, the asshole brother is now staring into the void that is called uh the consequences of his own fucking actions so the undeniable but, but of course evidence of the consequences of his own it, actions yes instead of just listening he, he had to experience it first um, again so american yes so um he finds he's like he's in this shed at one point he finds something that we don't see what he sees but it makes him gag and he almost throws up and he then all of a sudden he starts getting chased by a dog i think it's more the smell than the sight it might have been him gag, yeah, yeah okay because i thought he looked into something and then was like oh my god started gagging and ran out the only reason i'm but, saying that is in retrospect after upon finishing the movie when other people retch in the same location because of the smell and say so oh okay i gotcha so anyway uh as the dog is chasing him all of a sudden the dog is stopped by this being with uh <laughs> with two you just see two arms and it grabs the dog and kills it very um, michael myers in uh halloween where the dog jumps up and then like it it yeah. falls loose and dies. It's very similar to that. Yes. Yes. Very. Um, so anyway, as he's kind of looking around again, he gets almost thrown down by something and he looks up and he starts screaming in the most high pitch fucking little boy squeal you could hear. Uh, but then it cuts away and we go to the next day and the good bro and girlfriend are going to go looking for him and anything they could find. Um, as they're looking, all of a sudden they find the little sister hiding under a tarp and that's the end of that 20 minutes the little sister still being alive was really kind of a nice pick me up after all the horse shit that you had to deal with um, yeah because she didn't do nothing to nobody right so. it's it's nice to know that she at least made it through the crash even though you know that they're fucked when they hit this island especially when you see the yeah. dog get killed by this thing that is supposed to be a human but very large you could say almost yes. humongous like a humongous you, human. like almost like humongous <laughs> <laughs> yeah see what we did there yeah we're very clever <laughs> Ha <laughs> uh, We said the name of the movie uh, <laughs> during a review thing. while we're reviewing the movie. No, that's not yeah. how that works. Uh, well, I can do what I want. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, uh, as you can see, things are now starting to set up. They're isolated alone on an island. No way off. Uh, they're all together, except for the asshole brother. He's off, but we s probably things aren't going so well for him right now. <laughs> yeah, we know that things are about to go really sour really fast, but it's nice of the movie to give us this little pickup to show that the little sister is still alive, but then the horror of what's about to happen sets in, and we know that even the little sister is doomed. And I just love the way that the movie dangles this threat for us of what's going to happen with the little sister. They do a really good job with that part of it for sure. Yeah. Yep. The rest of the setup is pretty standard slasher fare. And I mean, the first 40 minutes we've burned through already and we're just waiting for something to happen. Uh, when they actually hit the island, the atmosphere is super foreboding and dark and kind of creepy, which is cool. Yes. Yes, it is. And um, it, it definitely has that abandoned uh, like summer camp feel from Friday the 13th as well with the buildings just kind of being there and somewhat vacated. Yeah. I mean, it's hitting yeah, all the slasher cool. marks and you then, want. And then you, you're more, you get that feeling of uh, helplessness because you're closed off from the world because like, unlike like Camp Crystal Lake, you can't just hop into a car and drive away. You have to get onto a boat, so. Yeah, so they're even more fucked. It's like if Camp Crystal Lake was on an island in the middle of a giant fucking Great Lake that you couldn't swim yeah. out of. Yeah, exactly. Um... So, start the next 20 minutes. Uh, the girlfriend goes outside. She's starting to wonder, like, where others are. And, but then she, like, starts to hear a noise. And we see someone's watching her. Uh, then all of a sudden, they, uh, look around the boathouse. And they see a whole bunch of dog and other animal bones and flesh torn off of them. And, uh, all the, also all the boats and oars have been broken. So, it's, it's a very weird environment they're in. Um, well, we see 
the asshole bro's girlfriend. Uh, she's uh, collecting firewood. She hears something. As she goes around, she actually finds blueberries uh, for food. And then she also finds a dog skull, which kind of freaks her out. Uh, that was a deer skull. Deer? Deer skull? Okay, I didn't know. Uh, it's supposed back- to be a dog skull, yes, but it was a deer skull. Uh, okay, it's supposed to be a dog skull, but it's a deer skull. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure that was a fucking deer skull she picked up, yes. Yeah. Um, then she goes back to, uh, the guy's name is, sorry, the guy's name is Bert, who has the broken leg. Uh, they're talking, um, and, uh, she's like, hey, I got these, uh, 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 the berries for you. Then we see off in the distance, a growling figure is watching them. Can we talk about how she got the berries to him, please? Go ahead. Oh, you don't want to describe it? You go ahead. All right. So she ties up her shirt in such a fashion so that she can haul the berries and she hauls them in between her boobs to the point where when she falls onto the skull, which she picks up, she breaks some of them and then continues to stain her top, her tits and whatever, like, I guess the bikini top she's wearing as well, blue from the blueberries that she's collecting. But she still manages to transport most of them in between her boobs in the shirt. And uh, it's actually kind of a great part of the movie. It's really cool. I dug it. That's nice. <laughs> are, are you just I was, like, gonna, you, I was going to talk sh- more about other other stuff she gets ready to do. Well, um, I mean, we have to acknowledge how amazingly cool it is that she's running around with blueberry stains all over her top for most of the film because of this. I suppose that is true. Yeah. <laughs> um, she sits there. She actually starts thinking a lot about swimming for it. And he says that he wouldn't try it. There's like too much to try to get past to swim. Plus, then she just says, bathed herself know, in blueberry juice. So she's going to attract something that'll eat her. Yeah, right. She's and marinating like, herself you know, before she hops in the ocean. That's not smart. <laughs> that's well, I don't know I, I, how many aquatic life wants to eat a blueberry. You know what I mean? I just <laughs> all it takes is all one, Matt. That. All it takes is one. It's never zero. <laughs> the chances may be low, but they're never, never zero. zero. Yeah, there's usually something in the ocean that wants to eat you, particularly if you smell a blueberry. <laughs> Um, he tells her though, he goes, don't worry. They, they'll be looking for me once I don't come back. So they'll, he's like, we'll be found, but will it be in time? Um, so see here. the other three, uh, they get to the lodge house and they see many dead dog carcasses. Uh, then we cut back to the two on the beach and Bert is starting to get real cold. He's starting to probably fever. He's just, he's not doing well. Yeah. So that broken leg is has, going septic or something. Yeah. She has the bright idea of she take, she unbuttons his shirt. She unbuttons her shirt and they rub uh, their bodies together for heat. Um, uh, did we mention that her tits are still a little blue from the blueberry in this sequence? Well, I mean, listen, they're just, she's trying to save a life. All right. And I don't see you fucking coming up with any fucking ideas. So you, Look, you leave her be. Basically her plan, whether it saves his life or not, is going to distract him because all he can think about is how good her tits feel against him right there. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> No, her plan is brilliant. Anyway. It's offering him comfort, if nothing else. Yeah, and unfortunately, while doing this, they are attacked. Um, Reminiscent then, of uh, like a Friday the 13th Part 2 kind of thing there. Yes. The group checks out the home, and they come about a nursery. Well, that's our next clip. How weird. Look at all the toys. Wow. Most of these have never even been used. The whole room. It's... It's too neat. It's like it's never been lived in. Maybe the baby died. Maybe that's why the old lady was so weird. She never got over it. There's no one here. The main bedroom's at the end of the hall. There's blankets and pillows. I'll go collect some of the food cans. Sandy. Found the blankets. Matches. Great. Musty. Pictures? Yeah. She's Parsons' daughter, Ida Parsons. See? That's him. That's the man in the painting. Yeah, her father. Here's her old family. She had a sister. Who's this? Not bad. Look at the way he's looking at her. Look, she looks something like you. What? No, I can't see it. So weird looking at these. The baby. Wow. She's so changed. Look at her eyes. 
It's the baby. It was probably sick, dying. We don't know that. Why else would Parson's daughter want to be stuck up here by herself? She was mourning. Look, no more photographs. Her life was over. She didn't care anymore. Those broken toys in the nursery. She couldn't stand them. She had to destroy them. Like the boats? Yes. She deliberately isolated herself. But call her the last date on this picture is 1949. You think she was in mourning for 30 years? You know what Bert told us. She was out of her mind. Bert never said that. It's what he meant. Sandy, if not that, then what? Could you open the window? Sure. Something flies in through the window, but then uh, the Sandy stumbles onto a full-grown human skeleton sitting in the chair. Uh, they, after the freak out, they determine that that is the lady uh, who everyone's been talking about. She has, she has expired. Um, and then they figure that must be why the dogs died. No one left to take care of them. Uh, that was, uh, that, the- that moment where she falls back on the chair of the corpse lady was actually pretty fucking cool and creepy. Yeah, that was creepy because yeah, you're being enveloped by a fucking skeleton. So. It's not like, and they, and they couldn't get away either. That's was one of the other funny things. So <laughs> yeah, it wrapped around her and got hooked to her. And the more she tried to run, the more it got like wrapped around her and she tripped and fell. And it like the actress just sold it really well. And it's one of the better sequences yeah. in the film. Yeah, it was, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Actually, at the, this point, uh, with the boyfriend back in, they check the generator and we, they see it works. Lights turn on and they're like, why is the generator upstairs though? It's usually a, a downstairs thing in the basement. But then they hear growling and howling and that is coming from the basement. So the boyfriend goes to check it out and as he's like sneaking around the house, the girls show up right behind him, freak him out, but they're like, we didn't want to be alone. He goes, all right, but now stay here. He goes to check outside, he keeps hearing noises. He grabs kind of like a log thing, uh, uh, like a log, I think. And he was getting ready to hit whoever had the noise and it was the girls again following him. <laughs> so, wah, uh, wah, wah. yeah, right. So they find this shed and it smells just horrific. The smell is terrible. But the boyfriend finds this book with a picture sticking out of it. They figure out that the book is the diary of the woman, and it seems to be part of a shrine that's in there. Uh, At this point, then, they open a door, and they find the bad brother and his lady friend with the blueberry juice. They're dead on hooks, and that will lead us into our final 30 minutes. All right, so the people hanging from hooks feels very Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The shrine feels very... uh, uh, Friday the 13th part two for mom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a couple kills that felt like Friday the 13th part two. And then like some other slasher movies, but this is a 1982 slasher. And I'm not saying yeah, that the, it's the, copying. I'm saying that it just has that feeling of the, the kills felt more like uh Friday the 13th part one, even. Yeah. Some like, of the violence you're yeah. from the killers aspect. Yeah. And you're just seeing the others and they go, Oh, and like, they like just look shot. <laughs> right. Yeah. I could definitely see that. You see more of Jason's hands doing the actual killing in Friday the 13th yeah. part two. And then as they do the reveal of who it is that's doing the killing, we see them more and more, and that's more towards the Jason side of it. So there's yeah. there's bits and pieces that this film does and certain choices that it makes in the way that it does the filming that I really enjoy too, and I, I like the, uh, the idea behind it. Um, we're moving through the film really, really quick because there's really not a lot going on. There's not in, a lot of dialogue. Yeah. It's action. Yeah, the 60 minutes that we just went through, you really do kind of sit there and feel all of it. But it's supposed to be building up tension and like this sense of helplessness for these kids. And mm-hmm. you just don't really like them. And the more it goes, the less you like them. And then it starts that's... becoming an endurance run of you wishing them to die. Yeah, that I guess maybe that's my only real problem, not to bury the lead too much, is that they didn't give me a character I really liked. I liked the fisherman, and I guess I liked the little sister. The rest kind of annoyed me in different ways. Well, the girl that uh, was into the main guy, but she's kind of supposed to be the bad girl, she wins yeah. me over when she starts taking care of the sailor and doing everything she can. That's true. To try That's, and take she care does, of them. actually. Yeah, she I, does I a face really turn kind the, of in the middle of the movie, so I start caring about her. And I don't mind Sandy either. I, I, I guess I'm really starting to just say it's those two brothers, but because at least one is on screen almost the whole time, there's almost always someone who I just start, because at this point in time, the good brother now is when I start getting annoyed with him. 
It's amazing uh, that like two really rotten whiny. human beings can ruin a whole yeah. film for you and like project onto the other characters. But it does. It, I, yeah. I got I caught myself doing it too. I'm like, no, I kind of like some of the other people. I do. Yeah. It's those two brothers are so terrible. One because he is just terrible, the bad one. And even the good one, he's so whiny. He just whines constantly. Uh, he's in a situation that he obviously cannot control and he very obviously does not have the tools to handle stress and to yeah. to to be grace under under fire or do anything that would basically make him be a hero. He's basically just uh-huh. panicking and demanding to be in charge because he can't know what else to do. Like he has to do all this stuff because he just can't think of anything else to do. And he won't let anybody else come up with any idea because he's just panicking. Yeah. And that's really yeah. fucking irritating. But he but whines the whole time. Right. And that is really fucking irritating, but he is a human being who just is panicking and no one yeah. is really trying to help him because he keeps pushing everybody away. You know, at a certain point, point the girls do kind of just let him be for a little while and they're like fine we'll just be here it's just when they see that corpse upstairs that they're like nope we're following him from here on out yeah right yeah i mean that's if nothing else then for the muscle Well, more or less, he, it's Operation Hide Behind Mr. Muscle Man there. Yeah, yeah. And let so. him take the brunt of the, the stuff. Like, they're they're basically using him as Operation Human Shield. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> right. And it, Okay, so I like all the ladies in the film I do like. I didn't like the girl that was trying to steal the boyfriend for the obvious reason that she's trying to steal a boyfriend and then pretending From to be this girl's best friend. someone supposed to be his friend. Yeah, yeah. And, and also so, someone that she's trying to be friendly with at the same time. Yeah. You know, like, that's pretty fucking low. But then, as soon as the island crash lands her priorities shift into taking care of people who are hurt and then you see how like the 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 fiber of her real being you know in in that moment in the island and she wins me over and i start rooting for her and i don't want bad things to happen to her but unfortunately they do (laughs) but it is what it is right right and so like the only one i really have left is the the lady sandy and the little sister i can't remember her name but that little troublemaker who basically was making all the right decisions she hid out until she knew she was safe she tried to stay quiet you know she was like doing everything you're supposed to be doing in this kind of film and I just really really don't want anything bad to happen to her at this point but I know something's yeah. about to happen because we're at the end of the movie so here we yes, go yes right so here 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 comes all our all our greatness I guess uh <laughs> so anyway uh we start out this last 30 minutes the sister just goes running away she can't she's freaking out paper clips moment she's running uh Sandy tries to go running after her uh the sister starts struggling down a cliff and she falls, so she lands, and she they, she has some Velma, her glasses. You know, Jinkies, I lost her glasses. But when she gets them on, the first thing she sees is Bert's head floating in the water. So now we see what happened to Bert. That uh, severed head actually looked pretty fucking good, too. Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was pretty grotesque, so good job, movie. Um, uh, so, uh, and then we cut to it's now nighttime. They're all together, and that leads to our final clip. Are you okay? I'm going to wait till it gets late. Then I'm going to go up to that lodge. Dust as much of it as I can and light it up. That that thing sleeps in the cellar. Gotta hope it's in there. Even so, though, the fire's gotta be tremendous. Someone's gonna see it. They're bound to. I've been reading the diary. Did Carla wake up at all? She's all right. Eric, I know what it is. What? In the cellar. Eric, it's her son. Ida Parsons. She wrote it all down in here. See, she had a baby. Carla thought that it must have died. That's why she stayed on here, keeping its memory alive in some weird way with the nursery and the toys. But that's not it. He didn't die. He's still alive. He's still here. The way she writes about it, it's all confused and crazy, but she saw the baby as some kind of a curse, a punishment for some thing that happened, some terrible, violent thing. It's hard to make out. The baby was born damaged, uh, deformed. Oh, here. acro Whatever it is. There was brain damage, too. And she decided to keep him up here to care for him, to protect him. Yeah, but to protect him from what? From the world, from people. But it's been over 30 years now, Eric. He's never been off this island. She was, she was sick all last winter. She knew she wouldn't live. The last entries are just scrawls, look. She was afraid for him. She wanted him to die with her. There was this plan. She had him wreck all the boats so there was no chance of his getting away. Only she died too soon. Everything destroyed this afternoon. 
So easy for him, so strong. What could they do with such as him? Shut him away? Kill him? They could never infect him with their corruption. His innocence would defeat him. His power. It's all like that. So much hate. Yeah, but a rich man's daughter? What could have happened to her? It's all connected with the baby. The father, maybe. I don't know. She never mentions the father, and she was never married. I don't think. Men are hateful to her. His lack of understanding is his blessing. He must only know that the island is his. He must never intrude. He must never have the chance. She left him with a message. We're the enemy. <laughs> Look at her. She gives birth to a, a thing, and then she has to spend the rest of her life condemning the world to justify it. But he's her son, no matter what. I mean, the way she talks about him, maybe she's right. How would society have dealt with somebody like that? A man who's hardly more than an animal. How long has she been dead? There's no dates after the beginning. And months, maybe, from the condition of the body. No wonder there's nothing alive on this island. He's been killing all the animals for food. And now he's run out. Now I'm getting some serious, holy fuck, did uh, Adam Green see this before he made hatchet vibes from what's going on with the guy living on the island murdering everything that comes nearby? Right, for food? Because he has none now. <laughs> yeah, because he's killed all the dogs and like it, it's like he's yeah. slowly going to starve to death. <laughs> the That's, tragedy yeah. of the guy that's supposed to be our baddie in this is life. You're like, you're like, well, Jesus, he doesn't even fucking know any better. Yeah, he doesn't. You know, it's, uh, it's almost sad. It, you know, not almost. It is sad uh, that all oh, this is happening. You know, happened to her after she was raped, and then uh, you know the rest of this, where she felt she had to be that fucking you know saddled in and just on an island by herself, and you know who knows what happened to her father or any kind of that shit. So I think that the child being isolated like that gives it this kind of carte blanche thing where they're like well it's is it because he's starving and does he know it's wrong to kill people but he's starving and he wants to make sure that he has enough food stored up it doesn't sound like the outside world's his enemy you know that's on the mother tree him so i just yeah so basically everything i, is food, I think yeah. he, he thinks everything he's doing is right he doesn't he, it's not wrong because he's protecting himself <laughs> it's really an interesting idea that like he's this born this deformed human being she considers that a curse and so she makes it a self-fulfilling prophecy instead of trying to raise him as a gentler kinder being who would mm -hmm. maybe try to help people understand how his appearance is not his fault instead yeah. she basically <laughs> carves him into a weapon to get vengeance on the world for the rave that brought him into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh... It's, ooh, it's dark. It's real fucking dark, right? Dumps, d bums me out. Well, this is the weird thing, right? Watching the movie by myself and just watching it, like, for the first time, didn't get mm -hmm. into any of this, really didn't really dig it. I was kind of feeling more or less like, oh, fuck you, movie, to, like, a lot of this stuff and not really digging what was going on with the story. And I think, more or less, my baggage may have been my fault in this because... Talking about it now, the stuff that they're laying out in the plot line and some of the interesting story points that they're doing, I think it's just more or less me putting the baggage of every other slasher film I've ever seen on this movie um, yeah. for why See, I, I wasn't as enjoying it as much. Because this this little story plot point twist and the way that they mm -hmm. kind of do it, where yes, he's deformed, but also he was rendered to become a monster because she's angry. It really just drives the point home about the horrendous thing that happened at the beginning of the movie and the damage that that causes. And there's a lot of stuff to unpack psychologically speaking about these motivations and you know what this movie is saying about a child can see through the act of violence and then raised and treated as such you know like there's a lot of shit to unpack in the the <laughs> the pathos of that if you know what i'm saying yeah, here. Um, yeah. no i got you so i i definitely dig that and i'm really into that aspect of it and that part of the storytelling and it wasn't until we sat down to talk about it because i was fully ready to come in here and like bag about the movie but there's like so much more stuff that i liked about it than what i thought so well like always like got to watch saying, it again right or something like yeah, i need to watch I this again to really formulate what it is that i feel about it yeah i uh i like i said i i didn't mind the story of it it was really mainly two characters but because either one of those were almost constantly on screen just annoyed the fuck out of me made it so i could enjoy really the film because i hated these two characters that much you know that's and not I a think, rare thing in a I slasher think, movie though yeah but i think you weren't supposed to hate 
one of those characters. So that's why it's it's not good. <laughs> You're supposed to like one of the two. I suppose so. Well, then why don't we just move on and we can finish this out? All right. So um, so we see the monsters rooting around. Uh, then all of a sudden, uh, the girlfriend though, because they're gonna light it up. However, the problem is they can't find matches, and the girlfriend's like, "I think I dropped them in the house." And the boyfriend has a whiny fit, and he even said, "I can't believe you." It's like, dude, go fuck yourself. He all is the way up a fucking pole. Matt, he is. I panicking. don't give a flying fuck with that whiny pubescent fucking voice of his get fucked (laughs) he is a human being who is panicking and is terrified for his life that is why he is behaving in such a manner uh, he's not he's not very graceful under fire granted and he needs someone to give him a quick spiritual kick to the head to bring him back to reality and get him to chill the fuck out absolutely but he is still a human being who is just panicking and yes it is irritating because people who tend to panic a lot can be irritating for those who don't yeah well, and also, stop blaming your fucking girlfriend, dude. All right? She's going through the same stress as you fucking are, dick. <laughs> yes. He is not handling this well, but again, he is just panicking. So, okay. Uh, they decide uh, they're both going to go to the lodge and see if they can find them, because a big part of this plan is they need matches so they can set the place on fire. As they walk up, they hear uh, screaming and roaring and growling. Uh, while searching, uh, all of a sudden, the deformed child shows up. I just call it the child now. Um, What else can we call it? He's never really given a name. Yeah. Eric gets to jump on it, beats living crap out of it, and uh, like most heroes, uh, makes the big mistake of pretty much saying, hey, we killed it without actually doing the job in. Uh, The creature gets back up, beats the shit out of Eric, and then puts him in a bear hug until Eric fucking dies. So uh, there's that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Eric has a very slow, painful death that probably made Matt feel happy, and I also backed up to watch twice. Yes, it it wasn't bad. It was all right. Um, Oh, I I wanted to actually state while he's clubbing the child slash our baddie whatever he's supposed to be in the head you actually do hear bones cracking to where you could assume that he's dead but where yeah. he mistaken, where he made his mistake was he didn't continue to beat the thing about the head until the head was nothing more than a thin paste being yes. driven into the ground asunder. That's that's exactly what needed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. Once you start hitting something in the head when, to the point you're where you're talking you're... about superhuman killers, that head there should be nothing left of it. If there's anything left of it, you're fucked. <laughs> well, how about this? Once you start to kill and don't stop until you are positive it is one hundred percent done. Yes. Yes, that is that is exactly right. Um, so anyway, Sandy watches as the killer starts carrying Eric away. Um, then she goes hiding in uh, the mom's bedroom. Uh, the child's coming up, so she decides to dress like mom and sit in the chair. She pretends to right be the 13th mom. Too. Very, yep, very much. And I even have it noted here. And starts telling the child that he doesn't belong upstairs, as she's told him many times, and that he needs to go downstairs. So eventually, the child leaves the room. Um, as she, uh, goes to leave, uh, then as she herself goes to leave, the child then comes after her. She falls down the stairs, but is able to get out of the house. Sandy runs back down to the boathouse where the sister is with her and says, what's going on? And here's where Sandy's kind of a dick. Sandy doesn't see, say anything, switches almost places with the little sister so that the creature grabs the little sister and squeezes her head until it goes pop like a weasel. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there, but it's at this point where Sandy goes from a face turn to a heel turn in order to survive. She totally shoves the other girl right into the killer's way. Yeah. So he gets her first to she, slow him down she enough. She pretty much slipped up the slower elk <laughs> to be taken down. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> I'm glad you saw that too, because it was obvious that's what she was doing, yeah, right? It was obvious that's what she did. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's like, she knew the guy was coming and she doesn't say anything. She just repositions her and leaves her right where he's going to get to her first. Yep. Well, Sandy hides, and she has the matches now. So she's able to light up, and she lights the the, the boathouse on fire. Well, the child sees her and tries to go through the fire to get to her, but it keeps getting engulfed in flames, screaming. Uh, she's able to get back out, and she's kind of sitting on a dock when all of a sudden the creature shows, or the child shows back up, burnt to a crisp. The child chases her. She grabs a sign that was in the ground, uses the pointy end, falls, and stabs the child pretty much in the gut. The child falls it dies and then all of a sudden the boathouse explodes then we cut to the next morning and we see she's just sitting on the dock roll credits all right 
So it had kind of a greatest hits moments of all these other slasher films that were kind of contemporaries and may have even came after this. So I don't know if it is before some of the stuff, but all the elements that I'm talking about are just things that it reminded me of that I'd already seen. Didn't check the dates when everything else came out, but like 82 is still very early in the slasher genre. And uh, it, it kind of is early enough to where some of this stuff it may have even done before other slasher movies that people may have borrowed from this one yeah. even. Uh, there's some influence that's very obvious for some of the other flicks that we already talked about, like Friday the 13th 2 is very heavily influencing this film, but not oh, necessarily yeah. in a bad way, just kind of taking some moments from that and hooking them in to work with the mythos for this story. And this, the, the creature, humongous, monstrous killer, whatever this person thing is supposed to be, they do a really good job of setting him up and giving him this, you know, horrendous backstory to where you like like a true slasher should be. You should feel bad for them and at the same time be terrified that they continue to hurt people no matter how much they've been hurt. Yes, exactly. You know, like that's the um, thing that makes them a monster. And when you call yeah. him a monster, he is hurting people because he himself was hurt and therefore is a monster. Yes, you have that. Uh, I thought they did a great job. You, you know, it's a lower budget movie. So, I mean, the money for effects went where it was more practical. Like, the creature itself. You never really get a decent child itself, I should say. You never get a decent look at it, really. But it doesn't matter unless your imagination kind of run wild, which I don't mind. The silhouette um, where he's walking on the porch that they ended up using in the trailer. And then yeah. um, there I've seen posters of that, too. And I think the Blu-ray release that I purchased of Humongous actually did have that as its cover of him walking across the porch. That silhouette is terrifying and her yes, crawling away in fear it's really cool that mm -hmm. that sequence looks really fucking good there there are there are parts of this that are definitely better than the whole of the film but uh, for being as early in the slasher genre as this is this spends a lot of time being a survivalist horror movie where they're trying to just find some food while they're trapped on the island and not really enough time with the stalking and the killing stuff like it's really kind of shoved to the back 37 minutes of this film like it's not even like the full third it's like the back corner of the film just becomes that yeah basically what i'm getting at here is if you want your every 10 minutes someone dies slasher formula this is too soon for that it's yeah. kind of before that and it's kind of more akin to um anthropophagus that film that we covered where they go to the island they're not shipwrecked there but like somebody was already there and basically cannibalized the entirety of the island and then they yeah. become trapped whenever he destroys their ship the 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 best kill in the movie was the rapist dude who gets torn apart by the dogs. I thought that was good and vicious. Honorable mention goes to the little sister's death because that was pretty cool because, uh, you know, where he squeezed pretty much her head like a pimple. So. <laughs> and it's a horrific death for someone that you are totally rooting for the entire time they're yeah. on screen. Like, it's the only person that you really care about. And Sarah's action of putting her in harm's way like that to defend herself. Granted, we're yeah. assuming that's what it is, but that's pretty much what it is. That's pretty yeah. fucking horrific and not something you would ever really see again in a slasher film literally throwing your friend in front of you to save your life yeah just just because you're like fuck it <laughs> You don't, yeah, you just do not see that, right? Like, there's very no, few slasher not. films that do that. I can't think of any off the top of my head, although I'm sure it exists somewhere. And if we haven't oh, covered I'm sure, one, maybe but we I will. mean, not, not every, not at a lot of places, though. Not in enough places, I should say. Yeah, so you got to go. I, I would say if you're going to watch Humongous, you got to look at it from the perspective of these are shipwrecked people who run into something that is starving and wants them for food. Don't tr yeah. don't expect your every ten minutes there's a kill with a slasher film type franchise thing. Now, this is more like George Eastman running around in Anthropophagus, slowly but surely following people and then eventually capturing them, killing them, and devouring them, but not in that order. Because <laughs> yeah. he's devouring yeah, yeah, yeah. them as killing them. <laughs> and, you know, Humongous had some real moments that were very much like that as well, that they really kind of hinted towards that sort of gruesome and gore. And I just feel like if they had more money, maybe they could have gone even more over the top and we could have actually seen him eating some of the people, like, as he's killing yeah. them or something. Eating or, a guy, yeah. Or yeah, more money money and this could have been something yeah doing a little texas chainsaw massacre like butchery and cooking or prepping the meat or you know i mean he clearly had some kind of a smokehouse to store the meat right like he was trying to make the bodies Do last something. like if he knows not a, if not a meat locker yeah he knows enough to at least to try to preserve the bodies so that he can survive on them for a while yeah 
And with, I mean, I don't know how much they were preserved, though. The smell apparently was not all that great, so. <laughs> I don't think it really bothers Mr. Humongous at all. No, no, but I mean, I just don't know how well it's being preserved, though, so. <laughs> there is that, but hopefully someone else will crash land on the island so he can do this again and eat soon, because it's been years since 1982. That poor guy probably starved to death already. Yeah, right? Jesus. I feel bad for him now. <laughs> Oh, don't. <laughs> well, we uh, need to fill a little bit of time, so why don't we take the break here? We'll yeah. have a little bit more music that's befitting of the movie Humongous, or has something to do with humongosity, if you will. Humongosity? In the Pirate Radio Eddie. And when we come back, we will do some sign up. Okay, so there is an actual pop song out there that's called Humongous, but in my defense, it's a fucking pop song, and I don't want that on the show. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I understand that. And it's not like <laughs> it's not like a classic kind of pop or, you know, even like a kind of pop that I can get into. It's like the kind of pop that I just look up a hu- the, the song's Humongous. It's some pop performer, and I'm just not into it, folks, so it's not showing up on the show. I don't want to disparage the song. I don't want to disparage the performer. Let's just say it ain't my bag, baby. My bag, baby. (laughs) And since you didn't give me that trampoline to bounce this off of, just give me the psyop news. Well, uh, here's one. This is uh, from December 15th from Villa. Paralyzed deaf mute teenager attempts to rob Brazilian jewelry shop holding gun with his feet. Yeah, this is like my left foot only with crime, and I'm into that. Yeah. A paralyzed deaf mute. <laughs> a paralyzed deaf and mute teenager in Brazil allegedly attempted to rob a jewelry store using a fake gun he aimed at his feet. The incident took place on Monday afternoon in Canela Re- uh, Grande- Rio Grande, Seoul, according to the Daily Mail. I'm going to stop the all my guns because cops don't help you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of true. Uh, the 19-year-old initially placed the threatening note on the shop counter using his feet before he aimed a plastic gun at the store owner. Shooting a the fucking hot load all over this dog. The note from the suspect said that he had cerebral palsy and is unable to move his hands and read, hand over everything, don't raise attention. Old cops Dude, you raised your own attention there. <laughs> I mean, you are a person holding a gun with your feet. You are getting all the attention you do not yeah. want from that alone. Yeah, that the, the attention's being done. The store owner has no, the, the clerk has no control over how much attention's now on deal. Uh, the I'm just, I'm, I'm not of- trying to be like facetious and make fun of the person for trying to hold up a robbery no. with like the feet. It's just that that but is that not something that you your- would ever see normally under most circumstances. Yeah. So so you are going to look, if you see that out of the corner of your eye, it's going to get your attention. Yeah, I'm just saying, that's that's an attention-getting thing. So, I mean, you know, you can't really blame the store owner or put that at his feet, all right? Just that's seeing just the shot. headline that the guy robbed the store with a gun held in his feet caught my attention from the corner of my eye. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, So... The jewelry shop employee seen in the video said he had noticed the suspect had been in the store for around 10 minutes before he handed over the note and brought out the fake gun. He said the customer gave him, uh, he said a customer gave him money because he thought he was begging. Then he pulled the gun out with his feet and that pistol looked real, told the Brazilian news outlet uh, Metropolis. Um, 
Uh, the police then arrived, arrested the suspect, who was found in possession of a knife. City Delegate Vladimir Medros revealed that the suspect has been questioned and released from custody, but that the investigation is still ongoing. I mean, it's... I don't know. <laughs> that's... That's something else, man. That's some next level... That's some next level balls on that guy right there. I mean, that is... That's some energy the right there to put out there. To hell with the police. I'm going to stockpile all my guns because cops don't help you. All cops are bumbling <laughs> dummies. You can't pay your bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. I mean, all of that is true uh, these days. All of that is definitely true. Uh, I just wonder... More? Yeah, I just wonder how much of that was just brazen and how much of that was desperation because they, uh, that gonna, person I'm had no get, other choice. I'm guessing it's desperation, right? In in Brazil, it's about ninety percent desperation, uh, only ten percent brazen. Yeah, That's that in Brazil right now, yeah. I mean, just like the the thought of it, but like, it just yeah, we made light of the situation because again, you don't normally see someone that would no. happen to have cere- it's cerebral palsy. The person said they had. Yes. Okay. So you don't normally see a person with cerebral palsy holding up a store with their feet holding a gun. You yeah, just you you do not. That's that, not something you typically see. Right, because in a society where human beings take care of each other, that person would never be put into that kind of situation because of the cerebral palsy. Someone should be helping assist that person in their life. And yeah. for them to be that desperate to take a fake gun and to attempt to rob a store in their situation is just horrifying. And I'm ruining everybody's yeah. good time about them robbing the gun, robbing the store with holding the gun at their feet. But it's just, it's something that you got to think about, right? You definitely need to think about it because... I mean, I mean, what the fuck are we doing with ourselves around here? <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Humanity has fucking failed itself. It truly oh, we, has. They definitely have failed. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do another yeah. story and like maybe bring people out of this if I can't find some kind of dire world fucking consequences yeah. behind the story. All right. This one's from Christopher Page. That's uh, our time shifting uses- orphan, Christopher Page. A uh, woman uses her prosthetic leg in fight at Golden Knights game. A fan during the Gotta Vegas love a girl who can Gold- take a punch. Jesus. A uh, fan during the Vegas Golden Knights game against the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday added a completely new twist to the sporting event brawl. That or they Take just it had off a her pros- mouth party. No, that, that would be a whole new event, yeah. Take it off her prosthetic leg and using it to hit someone. Ooh, is that me posted- getting a metal rod shoved up my rectum? Possibly. In a video posted to Twitter, the woman as well as others around her, including one fan in a Mark andre Fleury jersey, whoever the fuck that is, yeah. had turned it to the row behind her to engage fans in a scuffle. The woman then reached forward uh, with her left knee, ripped off a prosthetic leg, and appeared to swing it towards other fans. I hooked up with a bad boy. The woman's arms were covered in the video by a fan standing next to her, so it's unclear if the prosthetic leg actually made any contact. It's the latest fan fight to circulate on social media in the past month alone. Cowboys fans were involved in an altercation with a concessions worker during their Thanksgiving Giving day game. Gotta love a while girl who can take a punch. Gotta love a girl who can tight- take a punch. <laughs> I didn't need that Titans- twice. Jesus. While Titans supporter was dragged down the SoFi Stadium steps during their Sunday night football victory over the Rams. That was a that was a short one. Oh, no. The Golden Knights lost to the Oilers on Saturday 3-2 to two after allowing two goals in the final three minutes of the opening period and never recovering. It's just their third loss in the past nine games, though, and they sit fourth in the Pacific Division with 24 points. Six points behind the first place Edmonton, whose hot start was fueled wins in nine of its this first ten like games. This is like Tracy's death fucked a porno. There you go. But uh, that's what we're doing at sports games now, especially at hockey. We're using uh, prosthetic legs. Okay, so somebody pulled a knife on them, and then they took off their own prosthetic leg to fight that person? I don't think anybody pulled the knife. Okay. Did the person I take off their, their own their prosthetic scuffling? leg, right? They took off their yeah, own prosthetic leg to wield it leg. as a weapon, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we shouldn't take someone else's leg. That's that's next level horror. <laughs> Can you imagine that you're fighting someone and you pull off their prosthetic leg to beat the shit out of them with it? That's a clip. Oh, <laughs> I mean, that's not just a clip. That's just epic. <laughs> That's that's the biggest dick move in the history of dick moves. Like, you gotta have a lot, and I mean, like, a lot of hate in your heart to rip off yeah. someone's prosthetic limb and beat them with it, right? 
I mean, yeah, uh, the only time I ever seen that was fake, man. It was in wrestling. Diesel versus uh, Shawn Michaels. And Diesel uh, went and tore, uh, one of the guys sitting in the front row was a former wrestler, very old though. And uh, Diesel tore off his fake leg and beat Shawn Michaels with it. I'm talking like tore off the leg of the guy you're fighting and then beat him with yeah, his Yeah, yeah, that's even worse. Right. Yeah, that's next level. Yeah, right. Like, okay, like I've got a lot of fucking anger in me, dude. And I've got a lot of fucking hate in me. And I'm working on it and I'm much better than yeah. I was, but like at my angriest and my most hateful, like I don't, I don't know if I would have done that, Matt. Like, I don't, I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, like I probably would have to been like really angry. Like you'd have to want to kill the person at that point. Yeah. At that point, you have to have no regard for anything. <laughs> if you're going to beat someone with their own prosthetic limb, you better just fucking kill them because you have already gone too far. Yeah. You've already, I mean, just go ahead. <laughs> just end it. <laughs> no, Jesus do not take Christ. another life. Life, it's just that's how horrible that sounds jesus yeah. wept oh my lord see we did we found another fucking bummer jesus the world just will not let us be happy there's, anymore there's nothing fun man there's no more fun in the world <laughs> all right it's just all bummer news stories <laughs> yeah why because we it, it, like there used to be satire and now everything's like satire is real so there's <laughs> nothing fun anymore yeah life has become so very surreal ridiculous and idiotically stupid that now satire is fully and 100 percent dead we're at the point now where the guys who are stealing bovine eyeballs for whatever sexual pleasure they want to use them for don't even make news stories anymore because the other people are so much more fucking insane right we need follow-up on the guys that are inserting bovine eyeballs into their anus to sm smuggle them out yeah i i agree but it's never going to happen because <laughs> everyone else is too fucking nuts now. <laughs> I guess what we're trying to say is the settle it the fuck down, Florida. It's a victimless crime. <laughs> <laughs> settle it the fuck down, Florida. Give the rest of us a chance to yeah, get some weird yeah. news. Jesus Christ, Florida. You really just don't even care about anybody but yourself. <laughs> and stop fucking your kin, Alabama. Oh, yeah. No shit. Roll Tide. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which Versus the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com com itunes spotify stitcher youtube and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found
I can't stop listening to Judas Priest. I let that go for way too long for everybody not listening in on the Pirate Radio edit to endure what I put there instead of Judas Priest's grinder. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Everyone else can hear some horrid shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not horrid shit. It's just royalty free. And let's face it, nothing's fucking Judas Priest except for fucking Judas Priest. Am I wrong? I'm not. No, this is true. Yeah, I'm not wrong. I'm just an asshole. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. You're just an asshole. <laughs> Well, if you're kind of wondering what the fuck Matt and I were talking about when we were opining about the loss of bovine eyeball smuggling in anuses in the news, I would suggest that you try to find the previous instance where we did discuss that way, way back when, which could have been our possible second episode. Where could you find such a thing as that, Matt? Um, I would believe on the Legion Patreon. Well, the main landing and launching page for Legion itself. LegionPodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. You can find our previous episodes there. They need to support our Legion Patreon because that's the only way they're going to hear Judas Priest. That's right. (laughs) Is if they're on the Legion Patreon. You do. You absolutely need to hear it because we're talking about it. And then otherwise, you're just going to hear some fucking royalty free music that I was able to get so that we can be on Spotify. Yeah. (laughs) If you'd like to hear, yes. if you'd like to hear the previous instances where I've also bitched about that, legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops dash podcast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. <laughs> One of the important functions of Cinema PsyOps is to share memes to the people. That me- That is very important. Those memes are going to be located primarily on our Instagram feed, cinema underscore psyops. You're going to see it there first. That's where I post it first. Three times a day, every day for the working human out there. The, for the working humans out there. <laughs> My brothers and sisters of the minimum wage toiling mm-hmm. and traveling Going on paycheck to paycheck living literally moment to moment just hoping that the boss will give you just enough money because it doesn't matter how much you make you always need just a little bit more because they literally pay you just enough to keep you there and that's it that's it I'm posting for doing. you you and sometimes they don't even do that cinema underscore psyops there you can then see that it will be reshared to our cinema psyops page and then our cinema psyops group on facebook i'm there on facebook as court psyops and you know what those those memes are even for the people who may not be working right now maybe it's not your choice they're still for you too (laughs) if you're crushed under the wheel of capitalism our memes are for you yes there we go (laughs) (laughs) and one of the places where i do not talk anything political at all i'm just literally following all of the porn bots that tweet the twats at me is definitely on the tweeters twitters i am at court underscore psyop there Uh, you can email feedback to me if you're getting tired of hearing this outro and telling me you just want me to do a show housekeeping ending that i just record once and play and it's over with every episode i can do that just email me cinema psyops court at gmail.com and unleash me from this horrid Shtick where I have to count on Matt to give me something to bounce off of right now. I mean, good God almighty, you're having to count on me? Do you know what that fucking feels like for him, people? He's dying inside. Slowly, rotting away. Well, while you're out there fuming mad and your name is Darren Wilson, the psycho podcast, and knowing exactly how Court feels having to deal with Matt, kick the fuck <laughs> out of this week and make it your bitch. Hey, can you hear me? Oh, fuck. Can you hear me? God damn it. Motherfucker. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Hey. Hey. Can you hear me? Motherfucker! <laughs> what the fuck? Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I could hear you the whole time. Fucking microphone became unplugged. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, something's going on with my signal here. Hang on. All right. Oh, you know what it is? It's my fucking headphone amp. Holy shit, it's my headphones. Well, that's a new one for me. My, headfo my headphones are going bad. Oh, well, that's bad. Oh, no, it's not my headphones. It's this fucking cord. Okay, yeah, we're good. I got it. All right, there we go. Yeah, we all got problems, and, uh, you know, one of them happens to be the cords wear out. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I couldn't plug it. I'm like, and I'm plugged, and then it became that USB thing of trying to plug it in the right way. <laughs> That explains all the swearing. I caught all of that through what I'm assuming is your computer's microphone. Must, until you... Yeah, it must have been the laptop. Yeah. That's funny. Okay, so you're definitely coming in on the snowball? Yes. All right, start recording. And I am doing so. One, two, three. All right, just to be a jerk and make sure, does it say snowball or whatever it says when you know yes. you're on your snowball on your recorder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I give zero fucks what I'm hearing you on, so long as you're recording from your snowball. I'm recording from snowball. It's it's on there. Yeah, you sound significantly <laughs> better than you did when you were screaming earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it was either the laptop mic or the mic that's on my headphones uh, that I don't use. They use the, <laughs> the, the snowball one. I hear they caught your slow gas leak. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah they, okay that was fucking crazy bev came home yeah. tonight and yeah it smelled like gas outside so we had a guy come in and take a look at it and he was like basically telling us that it wasn't even enough to where it would have been dangerous even if yeah. it was like this amount coming in the inside you know that it would always yeah. dissipate and he's like there's i've seen you know houses that have had worse leaks than this that still would be perfectly safe and everything like that he's like oh yeah like he was basically like telling me that to make me feel better as he was fixing it no that's good <laughs> if he would have said that and just drove off i would have been like what the fuck but no the the mud guy was actually great actually all the, oh, there you go. all the actual folks that show up at your house to do the work and take care of shit for you with the public they're, utilities here i've never really had a problem with yeah they're typically good peeps you never really have too much of a problem with them yeah sometimes you just find the wrong person on the wrong day at the call center whenever you're trying to get help from them but that's just the, yeah. i mean that's the nature of it and you just move on and hope for the best <laughs> yeah pretty much you're just like all right well i know how it is uh. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've been there, so I give them slack. Can you hear this? Yeah, sure can. All yeah. right. Yeah, so I was going to tell that story once we actually got into the main meat of the show uh. and everything. Uh, last thing I need to make sure of, you covered humongous this Humongous. Week. 1982. As in, you humongously wasted my time with this movie. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Um, I don't want to do that again. Sorry, I just, might, you might get a beep on my side of the recording at one point. Um, uh, um, so anyway, uh, then, uh, he, uh, hold on, sorry. Um, but you just fucking have to derail me all the fucking time, don't you? I'm sorry I have things to say about a movie you didn't like. I didn't mind the movie. I just don't like it when you have things to say. Anyway. Join the fucking club! <laughs> There's dozens of us. Does it? Uh, so, uh... Yes, he is not handling this well, but again, he is just panicking. <laughs> she don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> well, you probably should Stop be. defending him. You're starting to make me mad about it. <laughs> I'm not defending him. I'm just telling you why he is behaving in such a manner. You're defending him, and right now I'm getting angry. Stop it. I Just think you're getting angry it. because your preconceived notion to be able to talk bad about the guy is being challenged by another human being and you're having to rethink it and you feel guilty and are angry. Psycho babble bullshit. How about you just shut the fuck up? <laughs> Can we finish the show then? Let's move on. No, I don't want to. No. Uh, Finally, right. let's sit here and talk about the character some more and piss you off even more. I think th th we're gone on the character. You're all monsters. Every one of you, you're all monsters. Um, Rain it in, focus, focus. Sorry. Yeah, no, and then, uh, uh, trying to, try to get to the PSYOP news. <laughs> trying to get to that PSYOP news, that sweet, sweet PSYOP news fix. That's okay, I didn't open up the clip shows. This gives me an opportunity to do that and talk to you while I'm doing it to fill in the time. Yeah, all right. Um, this one comes from Christopher. Uh, do we do this one? Woman uses her prosthetic leg in fight at Golden Knights game. Uh, no, we have not done that one yet. And is the last name Paige on that? Yes. Uh, he says his full name on his podcast, so we'll do his full name and we'll just hit this again.
while you're out there fuming mad and your name is Darren Wilson of the Psycho Semantic Podcast and knowing exactly how Court feels having to deal with Matt, kick the fuck <laughs> out of this week and make it your bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Well played. Well played. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, he may have even stopped listening to that because of how mad you made him by, by ghosting him that bad. I know, I know, I know, that's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> once you've worked on yourself, you're getting better with communicating, but once you've worked on yourself, you should apologize at some point. I, I definitely will. I definitely will. <laughs> I definitely make apologies. Too many people. I know. I know you got shit to work through, man. It's all good. And are you still recording? I am, and now I am not.